So in this video, we're doing the maximum flow minimum cut algorithm. Algorithm series of steps. We're going to use something called a minimum cut to tell us what the maximum flow of a weighted directed flow network is. So first of all, let's look at a network and figure out what a cut is. All right, this is my flow network. Now remember, this is my source because our edges are moving away from it. And this is my sink because everything's flowing in towards it. Now I haven't put weights on it because I don't need to have weights on it to show you what a cut is. Okay, so what's a cut? A cut cuts the network so that the source is on one side of the network and the sink is on the other. We're just going to cut it through the edges. Okay, so let me show you what a cut looks like. Dot, 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 dot. All right, I've created a cut. I've cut off the source from the sink. You can imagine, like, I put a block there, I put a block there, I put a block there. No water can get through. No water at all is getting from the source to the sink. There are other cuts as well. So I could cut this network off instead by going like that, right? If I put a block there and a block there and a block there, water cannot get through this network. I've cut the source off from the sink. Uh, let's say I put a cut somewhere else. Where else could I put a cut? Well, let's say I put a cut like this. Cut, 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 cut. Okay, is that a cut? No, that is not a cut. Because, yes, I've put a block here, 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 and here, but water can easily get from the source to the sink like this. Okay, so that is not a cut. So, definition of a cut, a cut cuts the source from the sink completely. Now, English teachers won't like this because I've used the word for the definition in that, but I think that's fine. All right, so uh, let's do a more complicated example. Okay, here is my network. You can see it's weighted this time. There's an important reason for that. We're going to be finding the maximum flow using the minimum cut algorithm. So the first step of the minimum cut algorithm is drawing in all possible cuts. If you miss a cut, you've stuffed up the algorithm. So we need to be really, really careful about making sure that we do every single cut. Now, what I say next is going to sound really wild and crazy, but just trust me on this, okay? So, the way that we're going to make sure that we get every single minimum cut is we're going to start down the bottom of the page, like this, and I want you to imagine that you're in a car. All right, draw a dodgy car here. I've drawn it like that because it's going to travel in that direction. Okay, I need to take that car and I need to drive it over the edges and get it to the top of the page can't see that line. Okay, I need to get it to the top of the page. That's the goal. Okay, now, what's one way to move that car from the bottom of the page to the top of the page? There is two reasons I'm talking about a car. We're going to talk about the second reason in a second. Okay, first cut. I can go this way. I can cut through this edge, through this edge, and I've gotten to the end. Okay, that's a great way to do it. You can see I've cut off the um, source from the sink. No water can get from the source to the sink. Done. Okay, I'm going to call that cut one. And with a little like subscript one there. Okay, how else can I drive my car from the bottom to the top? Well, I'm going to keep driving through this edge. I'm going to keep driving through this edge until I can't drive through this edge anymore. Until I've exhausted all my options. Okay, I could start there, drive through that edge, and instead of driving through that edge, I could drive through this edge, and then through that edge. And I've gone all the way from the bottom, through that first edge, and then through these other two. That, predictably, I'm going to call cut two. Now, can I drive from the bottom through this edge a third time a different way? Yes. I can go through the bottom, through this one, through this one, and up to the top. That is cut three. Now, can I go through this edge another way? Uh, no. Okay, because if you think about it, I've gone through that edge, and 
I could, from that edge, I could go through this one, through that one, and through that one. They're my only three options, right? And once I go through that one, the only other option is to go through that one, which I've done. The only other option is to go through that one. Now, when you're doing your cuts, you're not going through an edge multiple times. You're not going back and forward and back and forward. You only go through an edge once. Okay, three cuts so far. Now let's start driving our car from the bottom of the page to the top of the page through this edge. All right, what can I do? I can go this way and out there. Okay, and predictably we'll call that cut four. How else can I do it? Well, I can drive through this one, through this one, and out that one. Okay, let's do that. Through this one, through that one, and out that one. Okay, that feels like cut five. Okay, and it looks like that's pretty much boom. I've gone boom, boom, boom. I've gone boom, 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 boom. Okay, uh, now what else can I do? I can go from here, through here, and then through here. And I'm going to call that cut six. And you can see every time I do this, I'm cutting off the source from the sink. Now, that feels pretty good, right? I've gone through this vertex, through, uh, sorry, through this edge, 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 and then I've gone over here, through this edge, through this edge, and straight through that edge. And you might think you're done, but you've got to be really careful because I could have gone through here, through here, and instead of going straight up there, I could have gone through, through, taken a left turn, and gone up there. And again, you can see, that's going to cut the flow off from the source to the sink. And we are done. Seven cuts. Okay, I have done all of the cuts. I'm feeling really confident about that. I've driven my car through all of them. Now we need to consider all of those cuts one by one. C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. What we're going to do is add up the weights of all of the ones we've driven through forwards. Okay, I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. All right. Now I'm just going to draw a bigger picture of my car. That's the driver's side for in Australia. That's the driver's side. And this is the passenger side. Now I want you to imagine that when you drive over these pipes, water flows in to the passenger side. And we are only going to count the edges where water flowed in to the passenger side, not when it flows in to the driver's side. We're not going to count that. Okay, so my car, C1. I drive over this. I'm driving, I'm sitting in the right-hand side. Water goes in the passenger side, 11. I drive... You can see I'm driving upwards, the water's flowing into the passenger side. There's my car. Yes, eight. Okay. The flow through that cut is 11 plus 8, which is 19. Okay. C2. I drive, water's flowing into the passenger side. So that's uh, 11, because that edge is 11. And then I keep driving up here. And then I get to this one, right? But look. The water's going in the driver's side, so I'm not going to count the water going in the driver's side. And then here, when I get to this one, water's coming in the passenger side, so I'm going to count that. So it's 11, the bottom one, water in the passenger side, not the 5, that's water in the driver's side, and the 3, water in the passenger side. Okay, uh, C3, passenger side, driver's side, because I, I drove my car like that, right? The driver's side would be getting hit. Passenger side, passenger side, passenger side. So it's 11, not the 3, 5 and 3. 
uh, equals 11 plus 5 plus 3 is 19. Okay, uh, so that's C1, C2, C3. Next, passenger side, passenger side, passenger side. 1 plus 3 plus 8 is 12. 8 plus 3 plus 1 equals 12. Um, okay, this one. Passenger side, passenger side, driver's side, passenger side. So, 1 plus 3 plus 3. Ooh, 7. It's a very small number. Let's double check that. 1 through here, uh, 3 through here. It's coming in the driver's side, so we don't count it. 3 through there. Okay, next. C6. Um, 1, 5, both in the passenger side, 3, so 1 plus 5 plus 3 uh, equals 9. And finally, C7. Passenger side, passenger side, passenger side, passenger side. So 8 plus 5 plus 5 plus 1. I should count the other way. 1, 5, 5, 8. Equals 19. Whew. Okay, I've done all seven of my cuts. I've added up all of my cuts by figuring out which water's coming in the passenger side and which water's coming in the driver's side, only counting the water that's coming in the passenger side. My minimum cut will be my maximum flow. And my minimum cut is seven. Therefore, max flow of water through this network is only seven. Okay, this is one of those things that you really want to follow your algorithm to make sure that you get it right. Source and sink. If you can, draw it so that your source is on your left and your sink is on your right. And then drive your car up through one of the edges, cutting it as you go until you feel like you've exhausted all your options. And then try it again over here until you've exhausted all of your options. And then count up all of the times that water flows in the passenger side door as you go across those vertices. Now, what has that actually achieved? Well, let's look at the network for a second. All right, I'm just going to follow all the paths for a second. Uh, water 11 goes through here, right? Now, there's a bottleneck because water will flow at 11 litres per minute there and then one litre here. So only one can get through here. So number one. All right, 11. Now, the 3 can flow up there, and then it flows along here. But only 3, It's 3 was the smallest pipe, so 3 will flow through that. 3. Okay, 1 plus 3 is 4. Okay, and then uh, water will flow up here, 8, but then it'll get a bottleneck here of 3, uh, and then that means only 3 is following, flowing through there. So in our 3 outlets... One litre's flowing through there, only three litres is flowing through there, and only three litres is flowing through there. So altogether, we should expect to only be able to flow, have a maximum flow of seven. So that cut procedure has led us to that. Now, you saw that I kind of did that without having to do all those cuts, right? Um, but... Networks get more and more complicated. This backflow here creates an issue. You can have multiple sort of backflows happening. And so once the network gets just a little bit bigger, being able to sort of reason it out the way that I just did gets really, really hard. And you really need to use this max flow min cut algorithm. And you're going to be asked to do that in an exam. So, all right, that's the max flow min cut algorithm. Follow the rules. You can't really go too far wrong.